I know a lot of you out there have absolutely no problem taking some pretty scary risks when it comes to either your day job or maybe some hobbies you're into, you know, times when it only affects you. But what about taking equally large risks with your family? I'm willing to bet you're not as excited about taking those types of risks. So in this episode, we're talking about some of the worst and riskiest situations possible to bring a Doberman into. Yep, that's right. We're going to talk about some of those scary things like same-sex aggression, littermate syndrome, and what happens to Dobermans when certain common household pets are living in the home with them. So that way, hopefully, you can avoid some of these and have the best possible chance at a calm, cohesive home environment with a really well-behaved family Doberman. So let's jump into it. Oh, and before I forget guys, if you do find yourself in one of these less than ideal situations that I list out here today, all hope is not lost. In fact, as we go, I'm going to be giving you pointers on how you can make it through if you do find yourself in that specific situation so you can still have a chance at creating your happy home. Okay, up first we have bringing a doorman into a home with a dog of the same sex. This is same sex aggression. Traditionally in the doorman world, this is thought to be male on male aggression, but there's been some recent research to suggest that female on female aggression is just as bad, if not worse, in the Doberman world. And this is especially true if the dogs are not spayed or neutered or if they're close in age. Um, I've also noticed too that when two males are living together and they get into a fight, they tend to get into fights first of all more often, but they seem to be less serious of fights. Whereas females will maybe fight a little less often, but it seems to be more intense, more serious, and much more likely to cause injuries. So if you do find yourself in a situation where you're bringing your Doberman home, to a house with another dog of the same sex, there are some things you can do to help reduce the chances that are being an issue. First of all, you can make sure there's at least a two year age difference between the two dogs. Um, that will help reduce problems. Also making sure the dogs are spayed or neutered, that's gonna also reduce issues between the two of them. And um, introducing at least one of them when that dog is a young puppy. Because at a young puppy's age, um, curiosity outweighs any fears or any other um, feelings. So that's going to help them have some positive experiences right off the bat if at least one of them is a really young puppy. Um, and that can increase your chances as well. Also, they will hopefully develop naturally their own pecking order between them. You know, who's kind of the alpha over the other one. And resist the urge yourself to get involved in that. It's not for you to get involved in that pecking order. And that can only confuse things. And lastly, you're going to have to feed them separately, probably for life. That's just going to be the safest way to do it. Number two is bringing a doorman into a home where small furry pets are already living there. This can be an issue because dormans have a high prey drive, especially for those small furry animals. Um, you know, the word pincher is German for the word terrier, and terriers, uh, which are in the bloodline for the Dobermans, have a high prey drive for small rodents and animals like that. So if you have cats or rabbits or that kind of thing in the house, it could cause an issue. When their prey drive kicks in, they tend to chase down whatever they're going after, and a lot of times they'll kill it or they also are known for pinning it down and ripping all the fur out with their front teeth, something else they can do, which of course can cause problems if you got small furry pets at home. Now, if you do find yourself in a situation where you're bringing your Doberman into your house where you have small furry animals, there are some things that you can do to help improve the chances of them getting along. First of all, you can introduce the, them when the young dog is a puppy, right? Because they have that curiosity stage and that'll override any other prey drive feelings, hopefully, and you'll have some good positive interactions between them and the dog will get used to the presence of the animal. So hopefully it won't be so unusual and exciting when they're older. Um, also, you can expose them slowly to each other. So you can have a baby gate between them, maybe between the two animals or a partitioned off room, for example. So they get used to each other's scent and presence before you actually introduce them face to face. And lastly, when you do introduce them, make sure the, the small animal, small fur animal has some sort of means of escape. That'll make sure that they can end the situation when they need to and it stays a positive interaction. And in case you're wondering, yes, Dobermans can get along with cats, but there are some things that you should know first. So if you're interested, you can take a look. I did a video all about that. Dobermans living with cats, which should be popping up right now in the corner of your screen. Now, number three is bringing a rescue Doberman into a home with young kids living there. Now, for the record, I am talking about a uh, rescue Doberman who you have no idea about the history of the dog and it's completely new to the family. You don't know what the 
dog's been through. Now, Dobermans, you know, they're not any more aggressive than any other breed in my opinion, but they're still susceptible to the effects of abuse and mistreatment, and when you don't know what the dog's been through, then it could be a pretty scary thing if you got young kids or babies around, right? Because you don't know what the dog's triggers are, and you really don't want your kids to be the first ones to figure that out. So that can be a little dangerous. Now, I've heard of a lot of rescue centers won't even adopt out their adult Dobermans to families with kids under 12 years of age, for example. Some local shelters will probably adopt out their Dobermans to, if they have any to any families that want to have them. So if that's the case, it's on you to use your sound judgment. So how do you avoid this? Well, for me, honestly, I would just avoid rescuing an adult Doberman if I had real young kids in the house. Um, it's just not the worst worth the risk for me. But I suppose you could ask the rescue center for the history of the dog. Some rescue centers do know what their dogs have been through and a little bit of their background. So that might give you an idea. If you trust the rescue center, of course, I would always attempt to verify what they're telling me. And don't rush things. Spend time with the dog. Visit them multiple times before you make an important decision like this. Because really, it's going to be all on you to keep your family safe and make the right decision. Number four, bringing two Doberman puppies in at the same age to one house. This can be really tough because you're experiencing the puppy stages times two, right? And your attention is going to be divided in already one Doberman puppy, specifically Dobermans, demands so much attention from their owners um, to really train the behaviors and not develop some negative habits um, that dividing that more than likely neither dog is going to get the attention they need. Plus, they're going to be distracted during training sessions just having that other dog in the house. And you run the risk of them developing something called littermate syndrome. And that's when the two dogs bond tighter to each other than they do to their owner. And this can just encompass a laundry list of behavior problems that, that can result from it. Um, in fact, did you know that service dogs, when they're young puppies and they go off for training before they go off to you know, uh, their handlers in the future, um, when they're getting that service dog training, they're homed with a trainer. And those organizations, I think almost all of them always will limit that to one dog for one training family at a time. No matter how experienced that trainer is, they never put two puppies together to be raised by one trainer. Why? Because they almost never uh, both graduate from the program. At least one, if not both of them, will fall significantly behind. So how do you avoid this if you do find yourself bringing home two Doran puppies of the same age at the same time? Well, this is a really tough one, guys. If I would suggest seeing a behavioralist or trainer right off the bat because you can make some serious mistakes here. Uh, but I would keep them see, uh, sleeping separately. They can be in the same room, just not seeing each other and definitely not like cuddled up with each other. Keep them sleeping separately so they have their own space. Also, when you train them, I would train them with individual training sessions separate from the other dog. That way you can have some bonding time with them and it can help avoid some of the littermate syndrome issues where they bond to each other tighter than with you. And lastly, I would socialize them separately as well if I could. Have some one-on-one -on -one experiences taking the dog somewhere separate from the other dog in the house because one issue with littermate syndrome is they bond to each other tightly and then they have trouble socializing outside their little circle of those two dogs. So you wanna build their confidence individually, so socialize them individually. Number five, bring an IGP or IPO uh, Doberman puppies into a home with an easygoing family. This is a recipe for disaster. If you haven't heard of IGP and IPO, it's also called Schutzhund. It's just another word for bite sports and protection training type thing. So there are li lineages of Dobermans that excel at this and some breeders uh, breed for that. And if you get one of those puppies, a lot of times they can be incredibly headstrong with extremely high energy requirements, even more so than your average Doberman, which already has high energy requirements. And if you bring that dog into an uh, average family, then it could be an issue. And if the dog doesn't get what they need and kind of what they're bred for and their instincts are telling them, they can lash out in other ways, including potentially biting and nipping problems down the road. Now, how do you avoid this? Well, simply the best way is just to avoid litters of puppies that are bred for this purpose during your puppy search. Ask the breeders when you're looking around what they bred the dog for originally. That should give you a good idea of kind of what their breeding methodology is. And um, if you hear lots of terms like IGP, uh, IPO, or Schutzhund, or all these impressive titles like that from uh, some of the ancestors in the dog's lineage and pedigree, then that could be a good sign that this dog might be pretty intense, um, which is fine if you wanna get into some of these sports and you wanna do that with your dog, but if you have an easygoing family, then it may not be the best fit. Number six, bringing a Doberman puppy into a home where the young kids outnumber the adults. And when I say young kids, I mean kids, you know, under eight or 10 years of old age or so, depending on the individual kid. The problem here is when the puppy's young, you're gonna to have to hover a lot over the dog and make sure the interactions with the kids in the house are real positive ones. Um, because 
if you don't and let's say you're distracted because you have too many kids in the house and the puppy nips the child and hurts the child or your kid corners a puppy and pulls on an ear or, or does something a little too rough and scares the young pup. Now you can have an issue where one of them is scared of the other and now the dog is going to be separated more through family events. Uh, your kid's going to be begging you, oh, please don't bring the puppy around during my birthday party, for example. Please keep them separate during this. Uh, and a separated dog becomes antisocial and the antisocial dog has biting problems and fear biting problems down the road. In fact, this is one of the biggest reasons why Dobermans or dogs in general are given up to shelters. So how do you avoid this? Well, simply best just to not bring in a puppy into a home where the kids outnumber the adults. But if you do, then you're going to really in that early, those early stages where you should be hovering over them to ensure positive interactions, maybe separate the kids. So the kids kind of have some one-on-one -on -one time with the puppy individually until the puppy gets a little bit older or the kid becomes more trustworthy. Uh, that way you can ensure that the interactions stay positive and you avoid some of these negative issues down the road. If you love learning about the Doberman breed, definitely hit that subscribe button and the bell icon down below so you get notified of my future videos. You know, YouTube recently told me that 80% of you watching my videos aren't even subscribed to my channel. And for you 80%ers out there, I'm talking to you. Hit that subscribe button because you may not get notified otherwise uh, when I release a video. Don't let a machine decide what videos you watch. Thank you guys so much for watching. I always appreciate you going out of your way to support this channel and my website, DobermanPlanet.com. Uh, and it really means the world to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. And uh, what do you think? Should we do this uh, same time next week? Sounds good to me. See you then.